you might want to kick back and grab a drink because in this video we'll look at the focal lens preferred and used by 25 great directors. Now just because a director prefers or likes a particular focal length doesn't mean he or she won't change it when the situation calls for it. Also directors might change their preferences as their careers progress. Some directors like to use just one focal length for an entire movie. Other directors mix all kinds of focal lengths within a single scene because that works best for them. Why are focal lengths important? To keep it simple, all you need to remember is that different focal lengths help tell stories differently. It's a powerful tool in cinematography. As we'll see, many great directors don't neglect this powerful aspect of storytelling. Let's start with the greatest of the greats, Orson Welles. Orson Welles shot much of Citizen Kane with a 25mm lens, which isn't that wide to begin with, but that's what he used to get his deep focus and majestic blocking over long takes. He took the skill to its highest with a touch of evil, most of which was shot on an 18mm lens, where he used it to great effect to widen spaces and distort faces, mostly his own. Focal lens don't mean much without the format it's used for. Citizen Kane was shot in Academy, but Touch of Evil was cropped for 1.85 to 1 from an Academy frame. I've written an article on the 35mm equivalent that I'll link to below. For the purposes of this video, all you need to remember is that if you crop the top and bottom to maintain the same horizontal angle, your composition will change. If you take the camera back to include these details, you'll need to fill in more of the scene from the sides. You have to decide whether you want to give preference to the horizontal change or the vertical change, and then find the equivalent focal length for the format you are filming in. To keep things simple in this video, I'll convert the crop factor for its horizontal dimension to a full frame 36 by 24 millimeter sensor. I'll also mention the general format as in 1.85 to 1 can be cropped from many formats as Wells did in Touch of Evil by cropping from the Academy frame. However, in modern film, 1.85 to 1 is super 35 millimeter which has different dimensions. If you want more specific details, please feel free to google the films and the directors on IMDb or elsewhere. Jean-Pierre Jeunet is also a huge fan of extreme wide-angle lenses and camera movement in the tradition of Sergio Leone. He's most happy with an 18mm and 25mm lens on Super 35mm. He used the latter focal length for most of Delicatessen. On Alien Resurrection, he went even wider, as wide as 14mm, to make the sets more imposing. Mikhail Kalatasov used mostly wide-angle lenses in his masterpieces Soy Cuba and The Cranes Are Flying. For Soy Cuba, he used a 9.8mm Kynoptic for 90% of the film, and the other lens was just an 18mm, which he used like a normal or telephoto lens. Few people would call 18mm a telephoto. Next, we have Roman Polanski, who shot most of Rosemary's Baby on a 25mm lens. He also used the anamorphic format a lot, most notable being the 40mm lens on Chinatown. I link to a video explaining the anamorphic format in the description. But the equivalent focal length on anamorphic lenses is not the same as spherical lenses. Also, both anamorphic and super 35mm widescreen have an aspect ratio of 2.39 to 1. But the focal lens will not give the same field of view on both formats. In the anamorphic format, you get the wide angle of view, but the compression of the actual focal length. In other words, a 40mm looks like a 40mm but is as wide as a 24mm or thereabouts. Keep this in mind when you make your calculations. Let's talk about a couple of directors who prefer wide fields of view in the anamorphic format, one of the most popular today being Wes Anderson, who prefers a 40mm lens or even wider sometimes, like a 27mm lens in the Royal Tenenbaums and the Grand Budapest Hotel. Another popular director who uses anamorphic lenses today is Quentin Tarantino. Even though he uses all kinds of focal lens, he prefers the wider ones like the 40 or 50 millimeter lens. Now let's talk about three directors who moved away from anamorphic to spherical. The first is Christopher Nolan. Nolan used a 75 millimeter anamorphic lens for most of Memento and Insomnia, considering the crop factor that works out to be about 60 millimeter on a full frame camera. With Batman, he continued to use anamorphic but went wider to accommodate the large sets. Now that he has shifted to filming in 65mm for IMAX, his go-to focal length is 50mm for normal shots and 80mm for close-ups. Another director who has moved away from anamorphic is Ridley Scott. 
He typically likes the telephoto range. He too began his career shooting anamorphic and stuck to lenses 75mm and above. He also preferred zoom lenses. Later on he gave up the anamorphic format and has since then shot spherically and cropped for widescreen like with the Gladiator. Recently though he has moved on to large format which is what he shot Napoleon with. The third director who moved away from anamorphic is Terence Malick. He shot a thin red line in anamorphic with a 40 or 50 mm lens. The close-ups were 75 and 100 mm. For Tree of Life they shot Super 35 with a lens range of 14 to 27 mm. On his latest film, A Hidden Life, Malick went even wider with 12 mm as his main lens and 16 mm as his coat and coat longer lens. They also went as wide as 8 mm on this film. To continue with the spherical format, next up is Steven Spielberg, who reportedly sees the world in 21 mm when filming Super 35. He uses a wide angle pretty much like Orson Welles, and it can be argued his blocking technique is probably the best the world has ever seen. He only tries other focal lengths if the 21 mm doesn't work. Another director who prefers the 21 mm lens is Tim Burton. He tends to stay in the 21 to 50 mm range and occasionally uses long lenses for variety. Martin Scorsese prefers wides as well, mostly the 25 mm lens or even wider, though he too makes exceptions, like he did for The King of Comedy, where he almost exclusively used the 32 mm lens, or for Raging Bull, where he used telephoto lenses for some shots to separate them psychologically from other similar moments. In Killers of the Flower Moon, Scorsese used the anamorphic format. We finish with the Coen brothers who love the 27mm lens. They generally stick to between 25 to 40mm and also use the 32mm lens with Roger Deakins on the Super 35mm widescreen format. David Cronenberg sticks to one lens per movie, like he did for Existence, where he shot the entire movie on a 27mm lens on the Super 35mm flat format. Another David prefers the 27mm lens as well and goes by the name of David Fincher, though he often also uses mid-range and even telephoto lenses to mix things up. He shoots on red cameras and the sensors typically tend to be slightly greater than Super 35mm. The aspect ratio is mostly 2.39 to 1 or at least widescreen as in the case of Mank which was 2.2 to 1. It's not uncommon for some great directors to prefer a single focal length over others, but it's not easy practically within the constraints imposed by production. Francis Ford Coppola stuck to a 40mm lens for most of The Godfather, though one can argue it was more due to the influence of Gordon Willis. On Apocalypse Now they used all kinds of lenses considering the nature of the production. Alfred Hitchcock preferred the 50mm lens on Academy, which is about an 85mm equivalent on full frame. The great master of suspense strongly preferred a natural field of view and strived to make his actors look good. In the latter half of his career, when he was churning out his great masterpieces, he preferred to use a 50mm lens and had the luxury of having sets built for him to match its field of view. The directors mentioned in this video have shot in various formats like Academy, Super 35, Anamorphic and so on. To find the equivalent focal length to the system you're using, I'll link to my article so you can learn to make your own calculations. Let's end the discussion on the 50mm lens with two directors who stuck to it for entire movies, Robert Brisson being one big name and the other being Yasujiro Ozu, who went to great lengths to create sets to accommodate the 50mm lens and its compressed frame. Unlike Wells or Spielberg, Ozu hardly ever moved the camera. He too shot in the Academy format. There's a lot of confusion about which focal length resembles the human eye. Is it a 35mm or a 50mm or a 27 or whatever? Or is it a 50mm lens in the anamorphic format or in the large format? It's not an easy question to answer. And the best way is to use different focal lengths and see what your eyes agree with. Finally, we move on to long lenses. Ridley Scott is one modern director who prefers long lenses. Probably the most popular director people associate with long lenses is Akira Kurosawa. I've already made an extensive video and article on the focal lens he used, so I'll briefly mention he preferred wide to mid-range lenses from about 35 to 50 mm on Academy, and only occasionally used telephoto lenses as a sort of extreme compression, like with Redbeard and Dreams. However, 50 mm in Academy translates to 85 mm in full frame, 
which most photographers classify as a telephoto focal length. I found it's better to use the focal lens in formats than to use loose terms like wide, medium, and telephoto. Now we come to the last three names on the list. The first is Sidney Lumet. As far as I know, Sidney is the first director to extensively document his use of focal lens as a storytelling tool in his book, Making Movies. He used all kinds of focal lens from wide to telephoto. He changed focal lens in different parts of the movie to separate them visually, carefully designing the look to convey particular emotions. Just to be clear, many directors before Sidney have done the same thing, so in that respect he's not a pioneer. If you don't have a particular preference of focal length, but just want to learn how to use all kinds of lenses for suggestive power, you need to study his work. He picked lenses as a painter picks color. The next director we're going to look at not only changed lenses and focal lens for storytelling, but even went to great lengths to have custom designed lenses for him. Stanley Kubrick famously used a custom modified 50mm f.7 lens designed originally for NASA for low light shots on Barry Lyndon. He also had a wide angle adapter made for it to get it to about 37.5mm. Kubrick also used extreme wides like the Kynoptic 9.8mm lens for scenes in The Clockwork Orange and The Shining. His signature technique was his long zoom from close up to wide shot, for which he had a custom made Cine Pro 24-480mm T9 zoom lens. Stanley Kubrick actually owned most of his equipment and even carried it in a custom van to the set. On the whole though, he preferred wide angle lenses, mostly the 18mm. Finally, we have James Cameron, who uses non-traditional lenses and custom designed cameras for his tentpole films. He has earned the luxury of experimenting technically in a way no other filmmaker can afford to, maybe except for Christopher Nolan. As far as focal lengths are concerned, he sticks to the medium range most times. There you have it, 25 directors and their favorite focal lengths. Check out the article I wrote for this video, it has all the details if you want to take a look. Thank you for watching, now zoom in to this next video.